Glad to know that you're still there and uh, watching The Breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. Right now, we're being joined by our guest to take the first hot topic of the day. EFCC begins extradition process by obtaining arrest warrant for Dezeni Alison Madweke, the former Petroleum Minister of Nigeria. And our guest this morning is Mr. Stephen Agyode, a legal practitioner. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. Okay, extradition. We hear that the case of uh, Dezeni Alison Madweke has begun in uh, far away uh, country. Now the EFCC wants extradition. What is the advantage of trying her here? Is, is she going to be tried for her crimes? And are we seeking, are we seeking um, uh, punishment for what she did? Or we're just, we're just doing a, a legal... Uh, what do I call it? Exercise. Okay, so uh, I think we should start by trying to understand what extradition is. Basically, extradition is the process by which uh, you seek to repatriate somebody for punishment. If somebody you suspect has committed a crime, or someone who has been convicted and you want him for punishment. So that's basically what extradition is. Now, uh, my little confusion about the whole matter is this. Extradition that is carried out uh, in a certain jurisdiction. So, for instance, if uh, a fugitive is in a country, let's call it X, yeah. you start the proceedings in that country and seek to repatriate him to another country. Under our extradition act, you really cannot start the process of extraditing somebody who is not in your territory. So in this case of Deziani, Deziani is clearly in the territory of the British government. So my confusion really is, where has the arrest warrant been issued? Because that's the way you start uh, extradition. this extradition procedures. You issue an arrest, uh, you go for a warrant of arrest. Now that design is actually in Britain, where was it started? Ordinarily in Nigeria, you will go through the process in the federal high courts. Mm. It suggests to me that if any proceedings is, has been commenced, then it has been commenced in the UK, not here. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's, that's my because she's not here. Now that's what we hear that um, he's being prosecuted uh, over there, and now yeah. EFCC suddenly is looking for extradition and all that. But as a legal mind, I'm asking you to understand something uh, because yeah. if there's a legal process against her in a faraway country, yes. do we really yes. need to extradite her or yes. there can be a collaboration with the country that is doing that with the evidence that we have against her from Nigeria and all that and get justice done? What is that advantage of bringing her home before trying her? Well, the, we, we actually can start the process of bringing her back. Um, from a foreign country, we can, we can. But the why, why the should we bring her back? That's what the question I'm well, asking. She's a why? citizen. First of all, she's a citizen of Nigeria. Um, there are uh, presidents to bringing back Nigerians who are born to Commonwealth countries. Uh, Chief Enahuru was famously brought back here to Nigeria to answer charges here. The only uh, peculiar factor here is that she is undergoing trial at the moment in Britain. Yeah. So uh, whatever uh, arrest warrant would be in Britain and will depend, I think, on the Attorney General there. You have to present all those things before the Attorney General there, then he will make a decision whether he will allow her to go, whether he will allow her to go when she's facing a trial at the moment in England is... Uh, <laughs> What I don't know, because I, I, I cannot see uh, England abandoning the process of a criminal trial 
against her for offenses she committed today and allowing us to take to, to now bring her here to answer for proceedings. So I, I would think that the, much of it is all drama. Uh, EFCC has just gone to the press to announce that they are bringing someone here who is undergoing trial there, and the feasibility, it all depends on them, and the feasibility of it looks very remote to me until she finishes her trial. So why the announcement and why the form fair? Mm. That's what I was wondering, because the, the allegations against her in the UK may not be the same one uh, against her in Nigeria. There it was bribery. Uh, oh, here no. it was a fraud and so many other things. And why they are coming, the timing yeah. seemed odd to me. That's why I kept asking why do they need to bring her home yeah, at this it, moment. It, to me, it's very odd too. Mm. Uh, it's absolutely odd. I, I don't see them extraditing the English people are extraditing. Although we have a treaty with them, we have a, we have a, under extradition act, we have a, a, a bilateral, a, 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 what do I call it, a bilateral a, arrangement. An understanding. For the transfer of people yeah. from there and the transfer of people from there. But the problem is that she's facing a criminal trial there. And I, I doubt if they will be willing to transfer until the proceedings are over. Mm. But what is making it so difficult to prosecute the Zani, even in Nigeria? Because the amount they say she took was humongous, is humongous. And if they have all the evidences, why is it so difficult to prosecute her? It, it, it baffles me myself. What I would say is that I'm surprised that they waited for this long to start extradition proceedings because the Brit this British the case in Britain started only recently and there was a long time when she was not before any court and it would have been easy to uh, uh, seek an arrest warrant in Britain and bring her start the process of bringing her here why it took so long to do all that I can only say one will find the answer to that in the political will of the government. Mm. Now that it is this way, uh, I would only say that I think that uh, what the FCC is engaged in as usual is the usual drama and form of uh, media, uh, media uh, looking for media clicks and all that because. Uh, I don't see how she can be transferred to Nigeria when a case is pending. Yeah. There. That's why my first question was whether it was really absolutely necessary and whether the timing was good enough or whether it was just a legal or academic exercise that uh, needs to be put out there for people to just see and say, okay, you're working and you all what? that. What really, what? Are, yeah, what really are what? the powers of EFCC by law? Well, by law, the EFCC is empowered to prosecute uh, criminal uh, people suspected of having committed financial and economic crimes. And uh, uh, although, of course, uh, <laughs> before EFCC was set up, uh, that rule was with the Nigerian police. So they have powers to prosecute financial and economic crimes. And um, this kind of case will seem within their purview if all conditions were right to pursue. Well, it's not only Dizani that uh, deserves persecution, and um, we always wonder what happens in the courts. We, we try to peek into the legal minds and see how judges think, how lawyers think, and all that. For instance, you have a governor or a f former governor who uh, is accused, accused of uh, fraudulent activities and the EFCC is going against this person trying to get uh, the person prosecuted and the person goes to court and asks for a stay of action and it is granted. Why, why does this happen? Because if you are, you are accused, you are, um, you are not guilty until proven guilty. That's the legal parlance that is being used. Why does the court 
grant people stay of action in a case that they could just go and prove themselves either right or wrong. This, this, is, a, <laughs> this is a national problem. Now, um, first of all, uh, if you are, the allegations of crime against you, our constitution, our constitution uh, gives you to be innocent until proved guilty. But the phen modern phenomenon we are seeing in this, uh, people rush to court to seek injunction against this a normal uh, thing would be for you to stand trial. Uh, any crime. But uh, we find nowadays that sometimes some people go to court and get uh, a, an injunction restraining them from being tried. It's really an anomaly and all that. And uh, we have situations where sorry we have situations famously where even when people have been convicted in this country uh, uh, or even up to the supreme court the uh, the uh, oh okay sorry uh, we seem to have lost audio there. We've been talking with Mr. Stephen Agiode, a legal practitioner, and uh, the uh, topic is uh, EFCC begins extradition process by obtaining arrest warrant for the Zani uh, Alison Madweke. And we've talked about the process and uh, why, according to him, it seems odd and he's uh, surprised that it is happening at this time and he expressed his reservations that there may not be a possibility of doing the extradition uh, for Alison Madweke and then uh, we were talking of sundry other issues we we're hoping that he might rejoin us but in the meantime that is what is happening Alison Madweke is facing criminal trials in the UK and uh, it's bordering on bribery uh, and corruption bribery and corruption go hand in hand and he's facing uh, those um, criminal charges in the UK. But right now, the EFCC, at this point, this very time, is asking for extradition, uh, which was, according to Stephen, uh, supposed to have been done a long time before now. Now that the, co the courts uh, have an issue with uh, Desani Alison Maduroke, or now that Alison Maduroke is standing trial in the UK, is expressing concern that this may not be a possibility. So the question is why? Is the EFCC making so much noise right now about trying to get her back to the country to do that? It's been so many years after she left office and there is this talk about fraud and all that. And then she's always been outside the country. So if they wanted extradition, why didn't they not do it before now? And Stephen didn't seem to have an answer to that as well. Nigerians are asking. Is this just, like I asked in the first question, is this just an academic exercise? Is this just an, a legal exercise? You just want to do it so that people will know that you're working or what are we standing to gain from the entire process? Uh, but we will cross our fingers and see how things play out uh, in the coming days, whether there is going to be any success to that. And if there is a success and she comes back to Nigeria, how are we sure that the legal system will not give her the, um, the opportunity to do what everybody else has been doing? You have taken X, Y, Z amount of money and then you run to the court and say, give me a perpetual injunction. And the court grants it. Perpetual injunction for you not to be prosecuted. Why not just go and free yourself? That's how the court works. That's how it should work at least. You go to the court, bring your evidences. Everybody knows that you are a free man and then you go. But you take perpetual injunctions that makes people even suspect you the more. And the courts are granting it. So who do we now trust if the courts are saying, do not prosecute this person, whether you have evidence against a person being a thief or not, do not prosecute him because he has come to us first. Is it because the person came first? Is it by come one, uh, first come, first serve? Is that what is happening? The legal luminaries need to explain to us what happens in the legal world.
But in the meantime, uh, let's just take another break. We'll be back as soon as possible to take another hot topic. I uh, would like to thank in absentia Mr. Stephen Agiode, the legal practitioner who was talking with us. It was a pleasure having you in the short time that we could.